34. Use the standard free energy data in Appendix G to determine the free energy change for each of the following reactions, which are run under standard state conditions and at 25 degrees Celsius. And then we have to identify each as either being spontaneous or not spontaneous at these conditions. Okay, so the balanced equation we have is Fe2O3 solid plus 3CO gas yields 2Fe solid plus 3CO2 gas. Okay, so first things first, we want to find that free energy change, right? Any change in chemistry is a delta. So it's that little triangle, final minus initial. And free energy, more specifically, it's Gibbs free energy. So we're talking about delta G. Now, since we're using standard free energy, the standard values in the back of a book, in this case, Appendix G, we're solving for delta G notch. Anytime that you have that notch value, that just means that we're dealing with standard back of textbook values. So that's exactly what I did. I went to the back of the textbook to find out the delta G's for the each individual components. But now, how do I find the overall free energy change? Well, it's an easy formula, and it's right here. Right? Delta G for the entire reaction, Rx n is reaction, is the sum, that's this little symbol right here, so the addition, the sum of all the delta G of the products, minus the sum of all the delta G of the reactants. So in essence, it's basically add up the products minus add up all the reactants. So are these values going to be the same or are they going to change? Well, this depends on your balance equation, specifically the coefficients. So just watch out for those. There was only one Fe2O3. There were three COs, two Fe solids, and three CO2s. These values, the negative 742.2, negative 137.15, zero, and the negative 394.36, that's all for just one of each component. But for example, now I have three carbon monoxides. So I have to take this value and multiply it by three. So I'm just gonna do that for the whole entire process. For this one, just to show you, you had one of them, so technically you would multiply them by one. You had two Fe's, so I take the zero and times it by two, and I mean that's just zero, but I'm just showing you guys. You got three carbon dioxides here, so I'm going to take the negative 394.36 and times it by three. Now I have to get that sum. Literally, in the balance equation, it's Fe2O3 plus CO. So I take this value and add it to this value. And then the same thing on the product side, right? Fe plus CO2. So it's the zero plus the three times the 394.36. So let's find this side out first, right? This is just zero. So I'm just gonna do in the calc three times, negative 394.36, enter that out. Okay, that's good. So we got a negative 1,100, and 83.06. Now I'm just going to come over and I'm going to do the reactant side. This is just the same number plus this. So I think I can do that in one shot. Let's say negative. Oh, I don't want the answer to be negative. I know why I did that. I meant to say negative, not subtraction. So negative 742.2 plus three times. The calculator will understand what I want, you know, what operations need to be done first. And then I'm going to enter this out. And there we go. So I got negative 1,153.65. And now I'm going to throw it into this equation, right? Products minus reactants. The sum delta G of the whole entire reaction equals products negative 1,183.06 minus reactants, negative 1,153.65. Keep change change on minus a negative, but you could just throw these into the calculator and the calculator will understand what you're trying to do. Let's find that delta G reaction, right? The free energy change. I'm just gonna go up here. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna grab this. I press enter, minus, and I'm gonna grab this number, enter, beauty of the calculator. Press enter, and there you go. So I got negative 
0.43. I just know that the delta G value would be in kilojoules. Keep in mind that each delta G value is kilojoules per mole. Well, you're timesing each one by your coefficient. The coefficient is secretly a mole value. So if you're timesing moles, you're getting rid of them and you're just left with kilojoules. So that's the basis behind that. But we basically have the answer to the first part. The free energy would be a negative 29.43 kilojoules. Now, is that spontaneous or is that non-spontaneous? Well, that's this little chart that we have to know down here. Anytime that you have a delta G that's less than zero, aka a negative value, your reaction is going to be spontaneous, meaning that it doesn't need any extra energy from an outside source to get your products. On the flip side, if your delta G was a positive value, greater than zero, you do need that extra oomph. It's non-spontaneous. But here, we have a negative value. So any delta G that is a negative value is spontaneous. And now we answered the full question. And let's just box that off. And we are done with this one. Now, before we depart, I just want to make one thing clear that we do need sig figs here, right? Any all of chemistry has to be done for sig figs. So just know that for your values that you started with, we don't count the zero because that has no sig figs, right? But in this case, you have just one number that's going out to the tenth, and the rest are going out to the hundredths place. So you need to only be able to go out to the tenths. So this 43 is just going to be just 0.4. So it'd be 29.4, and that's the kilojoules. And now we are done. So I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Check the channel out. We also have physics and math videos and much more to come. So check back. All right. Love helping you guys out. Have a great day. And tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel. Love to help anybody that needs it. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.